Glycogen metabolism involves two important processes. We have the synthesis of glycogen from glucose molecules, glycogenesis, and we also have the breakdown of glycogen into glucose, glycogen degradation. Now, these two processes never take place at the same exact moment in time inside our cells. In fact, the cells of our body have a mechanism in place that helps regulate these processes in a reciprocal fashion. And what that basically means is, when one process is on, the other process must be off. For instance, if our body, if our cells are breaking down glycogen to glucose, the process of glycogen synthesis will be turned off. Now, what exactly is this process of reciprocal regulation and how does it actually take place? So let's begin by imagining that our body is either exercising or our body is fasting. In either case, the blood glucose levels in our body will decrease. And when our blood concentration of glucose basically decreases, what that means is our liver cells will begin to break down glycogen to glucose and release that glucose into the blood. And that will help maintain a correct concentration of glucose in our blood. At the same time, for instance, if we're exercising, our skeletal muscles will begin to break down glycogen to glucose and use that glucose to form the energy ATP molecules needed to carry out the proper voluntary motions that are required for that particular exercise. So basically, during these circumstances, our body wants to break down glycogen to glucose, but at the same time, it wants to stop the process of the synthesis of glycogen, glycogenesis. So this is the signal transduction pathway that essentially allows us to carry out these two processes to turn on glycogen breakdown and turn off glycogen synthesis. So let's imagine where in our liver cell so we have glucagon and to a very small extent epinephrine are the primary messengers that bind to these receptor molecules on liver cells and once the glucagon binds onto the glucagon receptor it basically stimulates the gdp to leave and a gtp to enter this green g protein and that stimulates the G protein to dissociate and go on and bind to adenylate cyclase, another membrane bound protein. And once bound, it stimulates adenylate cyclase to begin creating prime, uh, secondary messenger molecules. So it transforms ATP into cyclic AMP. Now, it's the cyclic AMP that acts as a secondary messenger. It goes on and binds onto regulatory sites of protein kinase A, and that activates it by allowing the catalytic sites to, or the catalytic units to actually dissociate from that regulatory site, from that regulatory subunit. And so that activates protein kinase A. And protein kinase A actually does two important things. Number one is it creates a pathway that activates glycogen breakdown and it also creates a pathway that essentially deactivates glycogen synthesis. So let's begin by focusing on this pathway here. So protein kinase A in the active form goes on and phosphorylates an enzyme called phosphorylase kinase and that transforms it into the active form. Now phosphorylase kinase in the active form goes on to activate phosphorylate phosphorylase B and that transforms it into the much more active phosphorylase A. Remember phosphorylase A exists predominantly in the relaxed state and so it's fully active. And it's phosphorylase A that is responsible for actually initiating the process of glycogen breakdown. So this allows, let's say, the liver cell to actually break down the glycogen into glucose molecules and then release the glucose into the blood plasma to help regulate the concentration of glucose in our blood during times, or fa uh, during times of fasting or exercise. At the same exact time, the PKA also actually phosphorylates glycogen synthase A, and that transforms it into the act uh, from the active form into the inactive form glycogen synthase B. 
Remember, it's glycogen synthase that initiates the elongation of glycogen. It builds the glycogen molecules. And so by inactivating this molecule, we stop glycogen synthesis from actually taking place. So this is what we mean by a reciprocal pathway. One of them is turned off or one of them is turned on, but the other one is turned off. So when we're fasting or when we're exercising, the blood glucose levels are, are low. And in this particular case, we're going to basically initiate a signal transduction pathway that activates PKA. And it's the PKA that is responsible for actually initiating the breakdown of glycogen and at the same time stopping and turning off glycogen synthesis. Now, let's suppose our body is at rest or our body just ate a meal that is rich in carbohydrate molecules. In this particular case, what our body will want to do is, it will want the skeletal muscle cells to begin rebuilding the glycogen to actually replenish the glycogen storage in our cells and the liver cells will want to uptake some of that glucose from the blood and transform the glucose into glycogen. And in this particular case, our body will want to actually stop the breakdown of glycogen while at the same time turning on the process of glycogen synthesis. And the enzyme that basically plays a key role in this process is known as protein phosphatase 1 or simply PP1. So what happens when our cells need to regenerate glycogen supplies? Well, an enzyme called protein phosphatase 1, PP1, stimulates glycogenesis, the building of glycogen from glucose, and turns off glycogen breakdown. Now, how does it actually achieve this? Well, protein phosphatase 1 basically activates this molecule back to this molecule. Remember, a phosphatase is something that dephosphorylates a target enzyme. And PP1 dephosphorylates the glycogen synthase back to glycogen synthase A. And that activates this molecule and that in turn allows the process of glycogen synthesis to actually take place. At the same exact time, protein phosphatase 1 also dephosphorylates this molecule, inactivating it, and it dephosphorylates this molecule, also inactivating it. And so this process, the process of synthesizing glycogen is initiated, but the process that leads to the glycogen breakdown basically stops. Now, let's go back to this particular case for just a moment. So let's suppose we have low blood glucose levels because of either exercise or fasting. What our body will want to do is stimulate the process of glycogen breakdown and stop the process of glycogen synthesis. And what that means is in this particular case, our body must also be able to regulate the protein phosphatase 1. It basically wants to be able to stop the activity of protein phosphatase 1 when we want to break down glycogen and when we want to stop glycogen synthesis. So let's focus on the structure of protein phosphatase 1. So this is protein phosphatase 1 and in the active form protein phosphatase 1 PP1 is attached to a regulatory subunit and that regulatory subunit basically allows the PP1 to actually interact with the glycogen and the target enzymes and target proteins. Now when this signal transduction pathway is activated and we want to basically turn on glycogen breakdown and turn off glycogen synthesis, what the PKA also does is the following two things. Number one, PKA goes on and phosphorylates the regulatory section of this molecule. And once phosphorylating that, and once it phosphorylates that regulatory section, the PP1 actually dissociates. And as soon as that PP1 dissociates, it's no longer as active in this particular case. At the same exact time, the PKA also phosphorylates an inhibitory protein molecule. So this is our inhibitory protein molecule in the form that is not attracted to the PP1. But once it phosphorylates it, this becomes attracted to the PP1 and it goes on and binds onto protein phosphatase 1. 
And once these two things take place, once the regulatory subunit dissociates from PP1 and once the phosphorylated inhibitory molecule binds onto protein phosphatase 1, it, put, it puts it into the fully inactive form. So basically, PKA doesn't only inactivate glycogen synthase A, it also actually inactivates the protein phosphatase 1. And that's what allows this signal transduction pathway to actually turn off the process of glycogen synthesis while at the same time turning on the process of glycogen breakdown. So once again, when glycogen metabolism takes place inside our cells, our cells basically separate these two processes. When one takes place, the other one does not take place and vice versa. And this is a signal transduction pathway that allows our liver cells and skeletal muscle cells and other cells to basically carry out this reciprocal mechanism.